because of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. And doctrinally, we are out. Do you know, there have been blackguards like Spurgeon. People have worshipped this man. They still do worship this man. He was a blackguard. He was a nominal Christian. He put his so-called faith in Christ. Now, he, being in the position that he was and still is in the hearts of so many people, said that he knew of mass mongers in the church of Rome that were Christians. And people believed him because it was Spurgeon. No, oh, he was a great Spurgeon. The wordsmith. The great Victorian preacher. Commanding hundreds of people. The minds and the thoughts of hundreds of people and audiences. So what? <laughs> the Victorians needed entertainment. They didn't have television or cinemas and radios and computers and other, other things. No, they went to the nearest vaudeville, you know, the nearest theatre, rather. And Spurgeon was a, a, a nice piece of theatre. That's what it was. For a Sunday. Or Sabbath day, rather. Um, Lord's Day. Lord's Day. All right. So, that's all it was. Because he was a, a grand wordsmith. Read his works. You can see just how polished he was. Even with a rural accent that he had. Hmm? Come out of her, my people. There are no people of God in the Church of Rome. If some elect child of God is in Rome he's there unconverted where do you think Luther came from? out of Rome unconverted and once he was converted he came out he came out because the Spirit of God spoke to him as it speaks as he does speak to each and every one of us and hence we don't join with Rome because we are taught of the Holy Spirit neither do we go into Anglicanism neither do we go into other denominations that are an abomination unto God because we're taught of a different spirit Unlike the rest of the world. And the rest of the world, when it would. There are those in the world that will separate from Rome and other, other denominations purely on academic and historical grounds. For her sins have reached unto heaven. You see? Reached unto heaven. Her sins have reached up got to the height of heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities her iniquities hmm reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled with her double her, her cup aye the golden chalice of abominations this is the blood of Christ ha Hmm? And of course she was rewarded by the Reformation. By the Reformation and she come crashing down. Boy did she do uh, uh, She came crashing down, she did. Hmm? How much she have glorified, verse 7, herself. Oh. Swaggering about the world. I... Look at the glory, look at the pomp, look at the pageant, look at the priests, look at all the ceremonies and holy days, look at it all. Hmm? 
the world was taken in by this system, this evil system, and she lived delicately. Yeah, delicately. Oh, yeah. When Luther went to Rome, he couldn't on he couldn't believe it. Fat priests, lozicking around, lazy, as it were, lozicking. The evil that he saw, the pride and the pomp and the circumstance, and the, all around the world at that time was poverty. Oh, the fat beggars sat there in their expensive clothes with their expensive way of life, and in the likes of Luther's Germany to him. Well, it was poverty of every kind. Spiritual poverty, financial poverty, academic poverty. These buggers are sitting in, in Rome here and Luther went with an understanding that Rome would be the same. He found it was different, completely different. She went around glorified herself, lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit as a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Yes, the queen. I'll see no sorrow. I shall see nothing. Nothing will happen to me. Eh? The queen of hell. Hmm? Huh? Married to the devil. Married to the devil. And sits on the left hand side of the devil. Oh, but her sorrow did come in a moment just like that when she least expected it. She didn't think for one moment she would fall, would be dis defoned. Oh no, oh no, I am the queen, and always the great authority. Oh, she was crowned with iniquity, with wickedness, utter, utter wickedness by her husband, the devil. Hmm? Oh, she was going to see no morning. No, absolutely nothing. Everything's going to carry on. And the world does the same. Oh, it's got to carry on. Individuals do the same. Oh, it was a wine, you know, to, today and so on and so forth, as we say. They just carry on. Nothing will be for us. Eh? Lead us not into temptation. Eh? Because we're so easily led into temptation, from temptation to condemnation. I boast thyself not of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Here she is, oblivious to her own destruction that is coming upon her. Hmm? And the fire of her torment, of course, would be seen afar off as it was with Imperial Rome. Hmm? Verse 8, therefore shall her plague come in one day. Her plagues shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her in a day. Well, what day is that, says the carnal mind? A day. Hmm? Remember, we're in the third heaven. We're looking at and being instructed of what is in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. This day is a day figuratively of destruction which spans literal time the day is settled the metaphorical day is settled in 
heaven is expressed in time. And as it's been expressed in time, it covers a period of time. Now, we can't say that in, say, 1548 to uh, 18, 1826, that um, that was the period of the fall to the completion of the fall. Just like we can't say when the agrarian revolution started, we can only surmise about the dates. It certainly was the 1700s, but the seed, of course, was planted prior to that. It's the same with anything in life. The only certainty is heaven as to times and dates. All right. When we have a day here, it's the same as we express now, isn't it? Eh? In the term overnight, the destruction comes overnight and we watch it. It's as though we've woken up and seen what we never saw before because we were asleep, spiritually asleep, intellectually asleep. And the scales of our eyes have come away and we've woken up and all the rest of it, all the other metaphorical terms that are used to express spiritual sleep. And we see it, and she saw it, and she saw it at the Diet of Worms in 1521. She saw it. She saw her downfall. The Jews saw their downfall. The Jewish state, when they crucified Christ. They saw it. And as they expressed it, the ministers and the Sanhedrin they put a guard upon the sepulchre. No. In case our first mistake Our last mistake rather be greater than our first mistake. Yeah, they made a mistake. In the end, you see, it was sealed up. That the, the destination of Israel was sealed up in a point of time at Calvary. And it took time, approximately 70, well, 60 odd years to finalise it. But it was on, ongoing, flowing through the spiritual realm to the end that Israel, political Israel, should be finished. Oh, it believed itself that it couldn't be moved. It was a special people under God, God's special people, the apple of God's eye. All these hundreds of years it stood and it's been in Babylon and out of Babylon. It's fought its wars and it's conquered and it's still there and still there to this day and they still believe as a people that they're God's people. They're left as a monument. That's all they are, a monument of the past. Because we that are justified are the people of God. And we cannot fall. We are not of this world. We are of another. Therefore shall her place come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God that judgeth her. The Lord God that judgeth her is Jesus Christ. He is the Lord God Almighty, the fullness of the Godhead, sitting in him, <coughs> resting in him, <coughs> bodily. <coughs> Jesus Christ, the one whom the Armenians say, you must put your trust in him. He's got a weeping heart. And all the rest of the godless, irreligious speech, spiel, talk 
that comes out of their filthy mouths. Jesus Christ is God Almighty and he is judging the whore, the mother of harlots, here at the Reformation. Judging her. Ultimate condemnation from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Our Christ, our Saviour, our Lord and our potentate. Not theirs over there of Arminianism. And our God is not sitting, weeping and wailing and going round the world trying to get people to trust in him. Neither is God the first person of all. Neither is he sitting back and waiting for time to run out. He is active through Jesus Christ. And he is bringing judgment here. This is the day of visitation. The Reformation was that day of visitation. Hmm? And the kings of the earth, that is all the rulers, the authorities, who have committed fornication, are total fornicators, treasonous brats, sold themselves and their nations to this abomination. Hmm? Committed fornication with delicious, deliciously with her. Isn't that right? Hey, eh? Verse 9, come on. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Aye. They lived deliciously with her. Pomp, hello there. Oh, <clears throat> Mr. Pope. Mr. Prelate, Mr. Cardinal, Mr. This, That and the Other. Oh, yes. They just walk through the midst of the poverty of their countries. Arrogant brats, one with Rome. And that continues to this very day, even though Rome herself is not the ultimate power. Although her influence is still strongly felt throughout the world very strongly felt but her rule as it was up to the reformation is no more that's gone her power <clears throat> her physical dimensions have gone now she's restricted to Rome itself, in Italy. But she still has great influence. And all the hobnobs, oh gosh, just associated with her. They're on the same level as her, spiritually. Hmm? But they would see, oh, they would see the fall of this system. This abominable system that robbed lands, impoverished the world, put the world in bondage to itself, chained the minds and the thoughts of people, and nobody but nobody was to contradict this system. If Galileo comes along, anathema naramatha. Send a bull out, excommunicated. You have nothing to do now with the Church of Rome. So you can't buy and sell and etc, etc. If you want to get married, you can't get married. If you want to die, you've got to go find somewhere else. Totally excommunicated. You have to do what Rome says. You have to be of the same mind as Rome. You're not to say anything against Rome in this period. And how they charged after Martin Luther when he left 
the Diet of Worms in 1521. No, he went after him to murder him. But his friends came and took him to the castle Wartburg. And he held up there, which was how it should be. How God had laid it to be in his plans, his purposes, how he wrote this part of history up as with the history prior to it and the history after it. It's all written up. That's why, here again, we're in the mind of God. Through the Apostle John. As a narrative of our book. Because in the mind of God, in this here, is a book. It's symbolically, it's Metaphorically, a book, even as the book of life is in the mind of God. And we read of that, of people in the book of life, the congregation of God. Equally, on the opposite side, we have the book or books of works. You see, they all rest in the library of God, in the mind of God. And this here is the book, as it were, with the rest of the book of the Revelation from chapter 5 to chapter 22 of the mind of God from the beginning to the end of the world. And this is one book. And contained within that one book, there is a small book, isn't there? which was sealed with seven seals and Christ opened it because it was the 